Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with Castello Wellness and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about metformin or glucophage, uh, the most popular diabetic drug, I believe, in the world. Uh, it's a fabulous drug. And if you're here today, it's probably because I either sent you to listen to it because I'm starting you on metformin or because you have an interest in diabetes or your diabetic itself. So metformin or glucophage is a anti-diabetic drug. It is the only anti-diabetic drug that has definitively been shown to decrease cardiovascular events. So we treat diabetes because it causes heart attacks, and it's really the only drug who actually has been proven to decrease the chance of heart attack. The actual current day metformin was discovered in 1922 as an anti-diabetic drug. It unfortunately showed up at the same time that we were starting to be able to make synthetic insulins, and insulin became all the rage for diabetes, and it actually was on the back shelf for over 40 years until it showed up again in Europe and was first brought to Europe in 1958 in Canada in 1972. It didn't come to the United States until 1995. The metformin molecule actually is derived from a French lilac flower. Um, it's described for at least several hundred years in the literature. Um, the ancient Greeks actually did not know what diabetes was, but they described a condition where people were thirsty and their urine was sweet tasting. So the doctors back in that day actually would stick their finger in urine and taste it and analyze it. And they knew that there was a sweet taste or sugar in the urine and eating the lilac flower seemed to decrease us. So they didn't have sophisticated terminology, but they were describing diabetes, and they actually were using a version of modern-day metformin to treat it. What's interesting about metformin is, is that it works on the liver's production of glucose. So normally as a non-diabetic, when you eat a meal, your liver is quiet and it doesn't make sugar or glucose or gluconeogenesis. When you're hungry or starving, your liver's supposed to be able to make sugar to keep you from starving. Ironically, as a diabetic, the signals in your system are goofed up and you actually, after a meal, not only do you have sugar in your bloodstream from the meal, but your liver actually inappropriately produces glucose, which adds to the um, elevated sugar. When we have higher sugars, we have higher insulin levels. We talked about that before, and you are actually hungry. So metformin is a great first-line drug. Um, it actually can help you lose weight. It may help you lose weight if you are insulin dependent or insulin resistant or pre-diabetic. You don't actually have to be diabetic to use metformin. We use it in people with polycystic ovary syndrome, people with low blood sugar reactions. It does not cause hypoglycemia or low blood sugar as a side effect because it only converts you back to normal. So it turns off the inappropriate release of glucose from the liver, not the appropriate release. It's generic. It's $4 a day, or for, excuse me, $4 a month at Walmart and most other places. Um, it is usable with, met, with um, other diabetic drugs, so most everything else we can use it with metformin. Uh, there's a couple of contraindications. If your creatinine or kidney function is poor, we don't want to use metformin. If you have certain types of uh, lung disease, Disease or liver disease, we want to avoid it because of a complication called metabolic acidosis. Um, we want to be careful with metformin if we're going to use IV contrast. So if you're going to have a CAT scan with contrast, we should avoid metformin for a couple of days. If you're going to have an angiogram or any other type of a process where we give you IV contrast material that can cause kidney problems. So we want to use it as a first-line drug. Um, it's inexpensive. We should have no qualms about using it in pre-diabetics. Um, we can try it in non-diabetic overweight people, and it may have benefit in weight loss. Um, it definitely can cause some GI side effects, uh, so diarrhea, gas, bloating, cramping are side effects. Um, we want to start slow, so 500 milligrams once a day at dinner. So I usually give 1,000 milligrams twice a day as a maintenance dose. I'll have you take a half of a pill once a day at dinner for a week. And if you're not having problems, we can go up to twice a day, half a pill, breakfast and dinner, and then increase to a half a pill in the morning and one pill at dinner, and then gradually up to a goal of one pill twice a day or 2,000 milligrams. The maximum dose would be 2,500 milligrams, so you could take two and a half pills in a total day um, for a slight improvement over the 2,000. 
we um, want to be sure we limit carbohydrates. Um, the more carbohydrates you eat, bread, rice, pasta, potato, uh, the more side effects we have the medic with the medication. So it, if you can control your diet and take metformin, you do better. If you go out to Olive Garden and have all you can eat breadsticks, you might get sick that evening. So we can use that to our advantage almost as a nanny. And I give you metformin and you almost have to behave yourself. If you cheat, you get sick. Now, if you do want to go out once in a while for carbs or you go to eat pasta, don't take your metformin that particular dose and get sick. You can go ahead and stop it. But in general, we want you on a lower carbohydrate diet that's good for diabetes, that's good for weight loss. A low carbohydrate diet helps you tolerate metformin better than if you have a higher carbohydrate diet. So that is a cumulative or additive effect. If you have trouble tolerating the generic metformin, um, you can do an XR or ER extended release version of it. It's a couple of bucks cheaper. Um, comes as 500 and 750. Doesn't come as a thousand. Actually, it does just come as a thousand now. Uh, it might be a few extra bucks, but you can ask your doctor to put you on the ER version. I usually don't bother with that unless we're having a side effect of the medication. So my first line drug, almost always, with a couple of small exceptions, is metformin. We can add other medications to this. Uh, if we're losing weight and we're not controlled with our diabetes, we can sit on the sidelines for a little bit with the rationale that the weight loss is going to help our diabetes. So sometimes even if your A1C hasn't gone down significantly, if you've lost 10 or 15 pounds in that three-month time period from the last time I saw you, I may leave you on metformin with the expectation that as we lose more weight, our diabetes gets better.